This is Code.org. I'm currently working on their CS Discoveries course, Discoveries course, Unit 3 Animation and Games, Lesson 13 Other Forms of Input, and Part 2. All right, let's see what we have here. First of all, woohoo, we're moving our B with the mouse, I think. I want to see this actually. Run. Oh, oh, there's no code. Um, so that will do uh, nothing. All right, <laughs> mouse X and Y. One of the simplest ways to take input is just is to just make a sprite follow your mouse your follow the user's mouse pointer. You can get the x and y location of the mouse using world mouse dot mouse x world where mouse oh cool and world dot mouse y. This follows the pattern you learned with sprite properties. Don't let that scare you. A sprite property is sprite dot x sprite dot y right it's these variables tied to a specific sprite this fall uh, yep x, uh, mouse x and mouse y are the names of the properties okay so they're the names of the properties of the world object right so world mouse dot y is the variable tied to the world do this you're going to make a b a b sprite follow the mouse around the game area Woohoo! The B image is already loaded in the animation tab for you. Yep, it is. Create a B sprite that draws in the center of the window. Inside the draw loop, update the position of the sprite to the position of the mouse. Okay, that's some technical stuff. Remember this function here? That's our draw loop. It wants something inside of it. Since it says inside the draw loop update, I am going to assume, and this will always usually be the case, create a B sprite that draws in the center of the window. That comes first, so it's going to be outside of the draw loop. Set the X position of the sprite to the value of the world.mouse X, okay? Set the Y position of the sprite to the value of the world.mouse world Y. Run the program and test if it works. All right, so I'm assuming we're going to use a conditional to test um, when the mouse Y changes, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. Good thing there's debugging and testing things out. I'm going to shrink these up for now. And I remember the first thing it wants us to do is go ahead and create the sprite. So we're going to make a variable. I'm going to, can I drag this down yet? Nope. So I'm just going to plop this above it. And guess what? I'm going to name it B. Let's test if this, I think 200. Oh. It's not going to create anything yet, because all we did is create a variable and set that variable's position to 200, 200 for our sprite. But there's no sprite assigned to it. So we need to sprite.set animation, drop it right below. Don't leave this as sprite. I named mine B, so I'm going to set this to B. If you named yours bug, set it to bug. If you named yours Fred, write Fred here. I then need to change this up from animation 1 to, well, B was the name. All right, inside the draw function, we need to, what did it say? Inside the draw loop, which is what that is, update the position of the sprite to the position of your mouse. Hmm, all right. So, well, wait a minute. Will we even need an if? Update the position. Create sprite, sprite X. Okay, I'm going to see, maybe we'll need to use math. Honestly, I'm not sure here. This is for two equal signs is going to be for checking if something is already to e equal to something. So we don't want that. I think we're going to want update the pos Y position to the mouse. Hmm, is it in Sprite? This is tricky. Variables? Aha! We want to change this variable to so if we're going to be moving mouse is this some automatically detected i'm going to put mouse.x here because as we're moving the mouse that will change and we want it to force the sprite x to change and remember i don't want this sprite i want this to be b okay i'm going to go back to here change and i'm not sure good thing there's debugging and then i'm going to select my sprite sprite y b and I want my sprite, my bees dot y property to change as my mouse changes. There, 
And remember, inside our draw loop, everything just keeps running. So it's going to keep checking. And as our mouse moves, I think our X will move. I'm honestly not sure, though. So let's find out by running this. Oh, and you know what we need to do? We need to draw our sprite. So check if the mouse has changed and draw the sprite again. That also means that we are going to need to do one other thing. We want to change the background, right? Because each time we want to white out the background and start over. This will run, remember, like 30 times a second. So we won't see a blank background ever because it happens almost immediately. But that way it has the object look like it's moving instead of drawing over and over again, making it kind of smear across the screen. All right, let's test this then. Oh, yes. And notice RB, it's checking every 30 times a second. If we move the mouse, it sets the new B's location. However, I think I don't want this to be 200, 200 unless... Yeah, we, it shouldn't start there. Create a B sprite that draws in the center of the window. So the center of our window should... Oh, well, that should be the center. Oh, because our mouse... Eh. So it should first draw in the center of the window. So this works. So it doesn't draw in the center of the window if our mouse isn't over the screen, which is a problem. I want to point out, technically it does. It just does so before we can even see. Well, no, it doesn't because draw is under it. So if I were to put this here, it technically does draw in the center of the window. It draws at 200. It's just doing so before. And just to prove this, I'm going to bring this right back. You should not do this if you're following along. It does so if I put draw there because the, it is set to 200, 200, okay? But to do this, I'm going to now hit Control-Z to bring all my code back. Okay, to do this, I'm now going to use if statements. So instead of writing draw there, because now, right now, it would be for like a millisecond, and then it's just going to draw in the corner again the second it runs through our draw uh, loop or function. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to use a control and an if. Okay, so if, and I'm going to use two of these. I'm going to drag this up inside of it, and then I'm going to drag this up inside of it. Inside our if statement, I'm going to ask the computer to check. Hey, if world mouse x. So remember what this means. Mouse x is going to be mouse x, the x coordinate of the mouse. Mouse values are limited to the size of the display area. So this is going to look, I believe, hey, is the mouse over the screen and is it at an X coordinate? So if our mouse isn't over the screen, hopefully it won't change our X variables and the sprite will be still 200, 200. We would need Y here. Okay. And let me go ahead and test this out. Perfect. So now when our code runs through our function and let's make sure it moves, it does. It says, hey, wait, is mouse X over the screen? If so, let's move it to that point. Is mouse Y over the screen? Is the mouse over the screen? If so, change it to that Y point. But if not, when we first hit run, we haven't changed any of it. So now these won't change to anything. And it will draw the animation as the original creation up until we put the mouse over the screen. So that should be the technically correct code. So that's what I got. And that's what's working for me. Awesome. Let's keep going.